All right, hey everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of Personal Foul. With me here is at Isaac <laughs> underscore GDF, and I am at Manny3108. We have a big show to get to, so let's go into our first topic. Yeah, the first topic is the Los Angeles Lakers and their recent loss to the Memphis Grizzlies um, on Sunday. So, again, the start of this game was really odd because Kassan ended up missing like his first four shots and it kind of helped set the tone for the rest of the game where the Lakers came out with the flat, came out with no energy whatsoever. Yeah, when was the last time you saw Pal <laughs> take four shots in a row? That was a pretty, pretty interesting start to the game. Right. But yeah, it was a very disjointed game. Um, the starters really didn't have much energy. The team didn't have much energy as a whole outside of a 15-0 run that they had in the third quarter. But really another disappointing loss for a team that's really struggling to find its identity right now. Yeah, and this is their second home loss in about a week's time. So they're, one, they're a dominant home team. They still are. They still like have the fourth best, their best home record. But it's just weird that now they've lost two like straight home straight home um, games already. So it's pretty something to look, something to look out for because we also play Oklahoma coming up at home as well. So it's pretty interesting to see if we can rebound and um, dominate again at home. Definitely. There's about a month left in the season. Yeah, you know, this games are starting to become more it. Uh, important. Yeah, especially and, in the West, where like the games really if you lose a game or two, you go down about three spots in the in the in the seeding. So it's pretty important. They have sixteen games left in the season. So yeah, but aside from the huge loss that the Lakers took on Sunday, there was other perhaps <laughs> you know debatable uh, story, De- very debatable, very debatable story, and that was Kobe getting benched late in the game with the Lakers losing fourteen and a couple minutes left on the clock. Mike Brown decides to. Bench Kobe for uh, a couple of minutes. The Lakers made a run, uh, but they still ended up losing the game. But just the decision making by Mike Brown was very interesting, and uh, you know we were both disagreeing <laughs> about this a little bit. Yeah, um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, I don't think it's the first. It's not the first time Kobe's been benched. They were losing by fourteen points, and at that point, I don't think the Lakers had another run in them to take over the Memphis Grizzlies at that time. So I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I don't see Mike Brown doing this. Like I don't think, I don't see this becoming a trend where Mike Brown's gonna start benching Kobe. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. There's one game he got benched. It's not that big of a deal to me. I don't, I don't see it. I think the timing of the benching is a little suspect. <laughs> uh, this is the same season where Kobe's missed 17 shots yeah. in a game, and uh, maybe a benching there would have been more logical. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't understand the the idea behind benching just Kobe when the team was down, you know, double digits. I I, I would have benched the rest of the starters. Would have seemed like a logical decision if the game truly right. was over. But yeah. other than stirring up the media, I think it was a bad decision by Mike Brown. Yeah, well, not only that, but even medical piece was shocked that he was going to go up <laughs> for Kobe. So that's an ind- indication of anything that. Everybody was shocked at that point that he got taken out. I mean, even Medivo Peace didn't want to go in the game for Kobe at that time. But Kobe is averaging more minutes than he's had in his last five seasons. So, And he's not as young anymore. He's 33 years old. So he might probably want to cut down his minutes and he picked that time to do it. I don't know. I, that's, that seems like a very odd argument to make because, you know, Kobe has been playing all these minutes. Yeah. And uh, the game, you know, Mike Brown has had no problem playing him extended minutes up to this point, and just now, he, you know, there has to be a reason other than and I think there minutes is. alone. And I, I think there is. I mean, Phil Jackson used to bench Kobe before, and there was a message that was sent with that benching. But this message, with the message that Brown has for Kobe, we don't know. But hopefully, he got received and you know, just move over, and move on with it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be something that, you, that people have to keep watching out to see how Kobe responds or anything. I think it's just something that happened and that was it. I don't see Kobe being bent again. Uh, I, you know, but if it were for a basketball message, I think it was a wrong decision to make because <laughs> Kobe was having you know, a fairly average game. It wasn't great to his standards, but he was right. shooting 50%. He had double-digit points. He was lax defensively. Um, so maybe that was the reason why, yeah. but the whole team was lax defensively yeah. up to that point. The, team, the whole team was flat, so benching him, you know. Yeah. But I don't know, but I was really critical when we signed Mike Brown beginning. I didn't think he was, a, I didn't agree with that signing of him being our coach. 
Um, but the one thing he did bring was defense, and it was, it was interesting to me that with Cleveland, when he, the team he coached before, he let LeBron, or everybody said he let LeBron slide with everything. And this is because Don, Dan Gilbert at the time had LeBron's back. And out here in L.A., management doesn't necessarily have Kobe's back. Jim Buzz signed Mike Brown. It was his choosing of, like, I want him to be the coach. So, you know, i got to give the guy credit. He he criticized or he benched the, the star of the team. You know, now everybody knows nobody is um, is more is above the team, not even Kobe. So, if anything, that could be a good sign that Kobe needs to, that check that he's not above the team. Yeah, um, I, ironically enough, I was in support of the Mike Browning, <laughs> Mike Brown uh, 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 signing. signing. But you know, this decision really make makes me think what is actually going on behind yeah. the scenes in Lakerland, uh, particularly with with the star player of a team getting benched in such a large market as Los Angeles. You know, that's just a you know, it's a sign of of trouble. It's not gonna. There's no benefit to doing it. If you're trying to teach Kobe a lesson, this is a pretty inefficient way of doing that. <laughs> uh, but the Lakers are a team that thrives in dysfunction and thrives in drama. So if anything, this could probably help the team. You never know. But you never know. You never know what's going to happen. So, you know, Kobe's going to go out for 60 against Golden State in a couple of hours. So or we'll or he might not even start because he might not <laughs> bench him. But, He'll uh, probably just start passing the ball like he did in Game 7 against Phoenix that year. Yeah, you, if, if there's one thing... <laughs> That we both know is that interesting things happen when Kobe's angry. So yeah, and I'm sure and I'm Kobe's sure he bipolar. Is. Kobe's bipolar. He either shoot way too much or he will just not shoot at all, and say, "Okay, I'll pass the ball," and that's all he'll do is just pass and not, not yeah, shoot. Yeah, so, so so it'll be interesting to see what, what 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 we get to see tonight against Golden State, and we'll report on that next week. Yeah, uh, another thing that we gotta talk about it's the acquiring of, of sessions. It's been about almost about a week since we got him. We played six games now with him, and the team is three and three. So it's it's a good addition, but it's yet to show its fruit of how good this team can be or will be. So what do you think? You think how long do you think it will take for the team to click with sessions now in the starting lineup? I think the team is beginning to click with sessions. It's just the way that they're utilizing sessions in order to gain f full potential or full benefit from the trade is is what the Lakers are trying to figure out right now. Right. There's been questions of whether to start sessions with the starting lineup or with the bench. starting with the bench because the bench truly is transformed with, with sessions in there um, going from you know a weak, slow uh, group of players to you know more of an up-tempo slashing group. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what Mike Brown decides to do with Sessions. Right now, it looks like he's going to be a starter, and I think he's more, he fits better in the starting lineup. You know, he's had his best game in the starting lineup, so. Yeah. But don't think is though, that with our, without him being on the bench, our bench is almost non-existent. We were outscoring by Memphis by more than 20 points. And with Sessions was in the bench, we actually outscored the other team's bench. So it does make, yeah, so it does make an improvement in our bench. It's inter interesting to see where Brown uses him, or if he goes back to Blake, because Blake um, gives the Lakers nothing off the bench. He gives them nothing. He takes away from the from the ability, the ability to run with Barnes. Barnes has a good chemistry now with Sessions, and he likes to run. So it's going to be interesting to see if Brown sticks with Sessions in the starting lineup, which I think he will, or gives, bring back Blake. So we'll see. Right, and I think the benefits that Session brings to the starting lineup is that you know, he takes the pressure off of Kobe's ball handling, yeah. um, less turnovers, better shot selection, hopefully, um, but that, it should, that it remains should to be, be seen. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are benefits that Sessions brings to the starting lineup as yeah. well as... Uh, yeah, what was evident in that Memphis game, um, Sessions was able to create shots for Gasol, it gave Gasol pretty decent looks from about 15 feet out, so it was able to create some shots for him. And then Kobe, it, he needs to be adjusted now to having a true point guard on his team, where somebody that could create a shot for him, which he's never really had um, over his career. Those were in the triangle, so it wasn't a need for a point guard to create shots for him. So now Kobe and the rest of the team needs to kind of rely or depend on sessions to create something for them and not necessarily have to force them in themselves or create something themselves. Yeah, and additions to the starting lineup generally take time for the whole team to adjust to, so yeah. you know, this is going to be a process heading into the playoffs. But Isaac, do you think the team gains wins as a result of Ramon Sessions going forward? I think it does gain wins, but I don't think it's that many more. I think it'll pay more more dividends in the postseason than the regular season. I don't think we're going to move any higher than the third seed. I don't think we'll cast San Antonio. 
So in that respect, I don't think we're gonna get enough wins to overtake number two. But we're gonna have enough. We're gonna be able to stay number three or four in the in the Western Conference. I think it'll be more dividends in the playoffs, where easy buckets are hard to come by, and I think he will provide those he could, easy buckets that we wouldn't have if you had Fisher and Blake as our as our backcourt. And I think defensively, Sessions brings a dimension to the game that we haven't seen before, and his ability to guard quicker guards, right. especially with teams like Memphis, teams like Oklahoma City that have the Russell Westbrooks. And yeah. Well, that's going to be the test we see on Thursday, how, how he does against Westbrook. That's why we kind of got him here, is to defend those quicker guards. So we're going to see how, we, how he holds up against, against Westbrook and see how if he can stand his ground. Well, what are your predictions for Thursday's <laughs> game? I think the Lakers win. I mean, they're playing at home. They, they better win than... Them. It's to be taken seriously. They gotta beat them. It's to be emotional, especially with Fisher being there. Uh, they they gotta take care of home court. Playing his playing his four or five minutes a game. Then <laughs> the he was there down the stretch. I don't know, but yeah. I'll I'll take the Lakers at home. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Oklahoma City is the favorite. Yeah. So I, I'd look for Oklahoma City to take a, a tough road win. But I mean, it's hard to gauge the Lakers. I think they'll get up. I mean, because right they beat my they lost to Miami at. At Miami, but then they came back and they took care of business at home against Miami. Oh, you remember that game? I remember that game. They you won. You remember that game with the foul calls? No, I was all the, came uh, with that foul calls. He uh, did way did commit some of those fouls. I give you like one or two didn't commit, but but the the he warning sink that time. The Lakers came. That's when we thought the Lakers had finally decided like we're gonna play. This is our team. And then everything fell apart yeah. and we had to trade everybody, but. They, I think they're going to rebound and say we got to prove a point and we're, we're still a, a team to be um, afraid of in the Western Conference. So I, I have the like, I don't think they're going to, it's not a guarantee that I'm saying here that they're going to beat the Thunder. But I think the urgency of them proving a point that they're not over the hill, that they, that they still have a window, the championship window is still open. And I think they got to put that to the Thunder. Remind them, remind the Thunder that they're the ones with the experience. They're the one with the championship swagger. Now, and you know, something, I'm going to echo something that the Laker fans have known, you know, up to this point in the season. And that's that the Lakers really need to start firing on all cylinders. They're, yeah. They've been sluggish up to this point. Well, not yet. They, don't, they gotta start firing come the end of April. Come in, come no, you don't want them to peak too early. To peak too early. I don't well, want I mean, I mean, show, but, no, but show us something. Yeah. I mean, you know, the Lakers have had absolutely no consistency up to this year, up to the point, up to, you know, before the All-Star game where, where or after the All-Star game where they went on a nice little 7-3 run. Other than that, you know, up and down. they've been up and down, and we need some consistency from this team going forward. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. If, well, first, got to get it done with um, Golden State, a team that's not doing so good. So take care of Golden State and then focus on the Thunder. And handle business at home. You know, can't have back-to-back losses at home. You know, that that won't stand. Yeah, and hopefully sessions, or the addition of sessions, adds to a little bit yeah. of that consistency. They have to win at home because if not, they're going to prove that playoff predictor right. Because I did it in like five <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> the Lakers lost in the first round to Memphis and to Dallas, which isn't that far fetched. If the Lakers don't get things together, I wouldn't be surprised if they lose to Memphis or Dallas in the first round if they can't protect home court and and if they say they don't start clicking and showing some consistency. I think it's a possibility, definitely. Yeah, so look out for that. Playoff predictor, you better be wrong. <laughs> <laughs>